Well, welcome to another episode of The Platform. It's awesome to have former Titans superstar Kevin Gordon on the show. He was absolutely electric on the field. What a talent. He scored so many amazing tries. I'm from the Gold Coast, so of course I keep an eye on the Titans, and he was an absolute superstar. We're going to see more and more of this stuff. Let me tell you. Henderson. Ah, uh, good ball, Michael. Well done. In a situation like this, it's away from Campbell. Rogers got a ball off. Gordon, a little kick through. Here's a good piece of work by Gordon. He'll go all the way and score the kick. Oh, that's brilliant stuff. Kevin Gordon. That is immaculate. Well, we spoke about him earlier. Honestly, the two wingers on show tonight for the, the Titans would match it with anybody. But he's also super creative off the field, making all kinds of videos and uh, music as well. Some great clips, but I'll let him introduce himself. Do you want it? Kevin Gordon. Do you want it? Do you want it? Ke Ke Kevin Gordon. Cut, cut, cut. We got it, we got it. Good stuff. What? What is. What the fuck does you do you want Kevin Gordon even mean? Well, let me spell it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's my name? So this is going to be a super fun episode, lots of great videos to share and things to talk about and uh, we caught up on Skype and here he is. Kevin Gordon, thanks for being on the show man, how are things? Good, <laughs> good baby. Looking buff. Look Beautiful, look at that. Tell us about the story man getting into footy because you're from the central coast right? Uh, North coast, from uh, Cross Harbour. Right. Originally 2450 and played for Sawtell Panthers, so another suburb. Pretty much the rivals of Cos Harbour and played for them, but and I went to Cos Harbour High School, so I was sort of I was sort of stuck in the middle of the the rivalry. So yeah, and um, yeah, played for Sawtell Panthers. I think I started when I was ten, nine or ten. Played there till I was sixteen, seventeen, and then moved up to the Gold Coast and. Uh, Played uh, one year of under 20s. It was like the first year of under 20s. I introduced a new program, the under 20s, and had a good year there. The top try scorer, 21 tries in 20 games. <laughs> like it was yesterday. But uh, yeah, did that and played, I think it was two games the next year, 2009. I played two under 20 games and then got caught, caught up to the big league. At what age, mate, as a kid, you know, growing up and playing, did you think that you had the talent to, to go all the way with it? Uh, I think I was around 16 or 17, or well, around 16, I think. I had to, sort of had to make a decision. Because I was playing, soccer was my main sport. I, was, so I played both at the same time, on the same day. I played, I played, and played like, it was either soccer first or footy first. I could play two, two things on the same day. Wow. Uh, originally, I was better at soccer. Soccer was me, me first, me first sport that I was really good at. Then, like, sort of come from the north coast, it's sort of like football is like the main main sport from that area that everyone plays. It's like, you know, the cool people do it. You know, you gotta <laughs> make friends. You gotta play sport. You gotta play rugby. It's the cool thing to do. So yeah, I did that. Ended up yeah, just deciding I'll play football. I'm good at that, and sort of the cool people do that sort of thing, and. Yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> so, mate, what was it like when you obviously you get to the Titans and yeah, there's not much attention, I guess, on the under twenties. But once you make, you know, the first grade squad, it's it's pretty much the dream of every kid in Australia that watches the game. What was it like when you're putting on the jersey and running out there as a like a first grade player? Yeah, it's like a you know, dream come true, as they say. It's funny. You know, you work all them years, like it was like what was it ten ten years or something, just training, but and playing and. 
well, when you go home, you sort of just play it for the love of it. But then you sort of think back to how, how long you've, you know, the amount of time you put in to, to be at the top, you know, to make it to the, the big league. And, yeah, it sort of just all hits you at once when, you know, you, they give you... All, all hit me at once when they... When he, the, the manager sort of called me out and said, oh, one of the guys is injured and, and you know, you're probably going to be playing this week. And I'm like, oh, sweet wow. oats. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> and I think I just, like, went home and just I mean, just started, like, crying with tears of joy. You know, I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It was just jumping around. And, Who was it against? Hey? Who was it against? Uh, I was against Bulldogs. Wow. It was like a dream debut, sort of without the try though. But yeah, it was like round round three, Friday night at home, home game, and I was starting off on the wing as well. So and we ended up winning, but I didn't score. But other than that, it was just, yeah, it was like it was a dream debut. Couldn't ask for more. That's awesome, man. What's what was the highlight? Yeah, you know, looking back, or a couple of your highlights that in the career. I mean, you scored the most tries for the Titans, right? Oh, I did have it, but I've been, been overtaken now. It's so like Anthony Dodds got it now. Meaty second, and I'm still in third place. Still on the podium. <laughs> Here I am, baby. In both defence and attack. Inside the final thirty, Zilman goes blindside. Ball back away to Gordon. Pop the pass back. Schrammer straight through. He beat the fullback perfectly. He's got Gordon in support around the corner. He's in for number two. Oh, yeah. What a great try. McKenna Mortimer. Now watch Thompson, he says, well, I can't get you, so I'm going to knock you over. So there's a penalty there. Then the bounce goes up and Kevin Gordons gets him the second time. It just bounced too high and what he was afraid of the first time, Kevin Gordon is able to stretch up the second time. Can he, can he, can he, can he, can he? No problem. You scored some epic tries, but like, do you have some like favourite oh. moments in, in games that you look back on and you just think, oh, how good was that? Yeah, obviously the debut, debut was sort of the, one of the big memories, sort of like, I remember like Luke Valley before the game saying, oh, make sure you get an early touch, you know, get, get, get the nerves out of the way, get that first touch in quick. So I remember they kicked it off to us. I think he, he had the hit up in the next, the next round. I was like, get out of the way, just pushing the hook around. <laughs> All right, I've got to have a run. I've got to, you know, get in, get in the game. And they yeah, ended up having the second run of the game and I was just like jumping around. just like, fuck yeah, this is it. This is first grade, baby. I did it. What's, what's it like? I mean, obviously, so many people grow up just watching the game, right? So we, we're all just fans, but we don't know what it's like to be out there. You're out there against these giant dudes, especially if you're taking a hit up in the middle. Like These dudes are 110, 120 kilo. They want to smash you. What's it mm. like when you've got the ball under your arm and you're running into that? Oh, when I first, yeah, the first, yeah, first few years, I was just like, yeah, whatever. I was like, so like, that's what we do all the training for. Like, pretty much we train... We try to train as hard as a game, or even harder, just to, you know, just be ready for the game, ready for anything. So, I think just all the preseason just gets you ready for running into 120 kilo people, and you know, put all the muscle on just to protect you. And I don't know, it's just sort of like you get used to it when you, you know, training and playing all them years. You sort of just get used to getting, getting amongst it. Sort of just another day in the office, you know, just run into someone, tackle them, and. Yeah, that becomes your life, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, I know, I know. unfortunately, you know, you had some serious injuries and you had to give the game away, like, pretty much in your prime. But before the big injuries, what was it like week in, week out? Like, are you are you always sore? Is there always injuries in the players because the, the contact's so severe every week? Well, the soreness is sort of a meter of how hard you worked, I think. Sort of like, the more sore you ended up, this is like, the more harder you work, so... So that's what I was sort of look at it like pretty much the whole preseason you were pretty much sore that, uh, every day just getting ready for the, getting ready for the you know the games the, the season ahead so yeah it was yeah pretty much every day just getting beaten up and going to the gym just getting ripped and you know just putting your body through hell just to be ready for the ready for the season so he's looked sharp there to kick across field from Caesar he's meant for Gordon who 
He's met spectacularly. That was Gordon running into Edu Wasili. Oh, this is a potential rib breaker here. Wasili's got him just, oh, look at that. I thought they were both going to end up in the grandstand. Yeah, it's another, it's a, it's a weird world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always had a pretty funny outlook on it, you know, and I think a lot of people didn't know your artistic side of an NRL footballer, but you were always, like, into music and making videos, right, even back then? Yeah, even, like, before, like, football, I was making making videos and I was, or during, while I was playing, and, like, it always be, my dad had a video camera and I'd always go around videoing him and videoing myself, doing weird stuff and making my own videos and my mate sort of introduced me to music and we, I started making some music back when I was like 17, 18 and so I, like I just, like every now and then I'd get on it, make a video or make a song and then I'd sort of just be back into football and sort of just forget about it and yeah, it sort of wasn't until like I did, a, did my ACL, which put me out for the whole year, like nine months, where I sort of like got the sign from the universe, it was sort of like, all right, not listen to us. We'll put you. We'll put you in the position where we want you, sort of thing. And end up, yeah, I couldn't move. So I was just sitting there. I was just like, oh, what am I gonna do? And end up making a website and putting all my old videos on there. And I had my mate who'd come come around and make music, and he sort of showed me how to make music. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is cool. And so I made a few songs and made some music videos that year, and sort of like sparked that little flame again, that creative flame, and. Then the next year I started playing footy again and sort of like forgot about it and got back into footy and like, yeah, football is the thing to do, you know, that piece of deal, you got to do that sort of thing and just got back into the footy head mode and sort of put her, put her away again until until I got injured again. <laughs> <laughs> the next, this time was an even more bigger sign. The, the, the second, next sign I got was this, ended up breaking my nose, I think it was two thousand start of 2015. Broke my nose and... I was like, shit. Then I went to, went to the hospital that day. Then the the nurse or the doctor goes to me, oh, there goes your acting career. <laughs> just like, what? A bit cruel. I, yeah, like, that's what you say to people who break their nose. But I don't know, it's just something that in them words just hit me, just like hit me, hit my soul, sort of just like. Oh, there's hang more, on. To, more to life than footy. Yeah, sort of just like, I want to be an actor, sort of thing. Like, that's what I want to do. And just like, sort of just hit me in the face, literally. And, Spiritually, just like, hang on, that's. I want to be an actor. I want to be an artist. You know, I want to. And sort of ever since then, I sort of like from then that year, I sort of just kept thinking about life and life after forty and what I really like doing and you know all that kind of stuff. And well, when did you make the video on the skateboard with the the magic carpet? Yeah, I was at the start of two thousand fifteen. I, I was like probably about a month before I broke my nose. I made that. So it's sort of like another little little sign in the the video sphere of the weirdness that I make. Were the other guys in the team like hearing about it and watching it and thinking, what's this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone was like, what the hell? And we are sort of going through a bit of a, a scandal at that time. And then I ended up bringing that out and instead of started going viral and all the boys were talking about it and the media and yeah, the, yeah everyone was just talking about it. I was just like... That was like the main talk. No, it wasn't talking about footy. It was just talking about talking about the video. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can show you the world Shining, shimmering, splendid Tell me, princess, now when did you last Let your heart decide one of the songs that I've seen on your YouTube page, which is hilarious, and I think it's before you became Deep Gordon, who we'll talk about shortly, but there was a song where you were with your mates at the gym, and I love that track. So tell us about making that one. Yeah, that was probably, yeah, back in 2013, I think. I was just, I just thought of this song, Get That Pump, that's what it's called, and then my mate went, he, had a, he has a mate down in Lismore, and has like a, he owns like a gym or like works there, and one night we just booked it out. Or just like when no one was in there, we went in there and just filmed this video for it. And I don't know, I made, I made a beat for it and chucked a few choruses and verses in there. Then my mate that lived down in Lismore at that time, what was this? Well, he lived down in Ballina, my, my other mate. And I was like, oh, sing a, sing a verse to this song. And then he ended up getting on the song and 
Yeah, man, me, me and him been making music for a while, and he's dropped a verse on it, and <laughs> yeah, just released it, and just yeah, get that pump, baby. Lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs into shape. Ladies and gentlemen, when we in the gym, we want to get big. That's right, yeah. And the only way to do that is to lift big, what? Rep big, yeah. To get that, 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 that pump, 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 pump. Get that pump, 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 pump. Get that pump, 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 pump. Get that pump, 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 pump. Get that. Situation on our hands is a huge bulge in my gym pants. Legs day to day, but I gotta say, I'll probably do my arms anyway. Where's the mirror? I wanna watch myself. Do see it up till I crap myself and get a pump, then grab a shake. Go back to the mirror and masturbate. Then squat it off and lunge it out. I'm the biggest in the gym, without a doubt. I'm a big man with a dark tan, and I post my photos on Instagram. Wanna buy a shirt? The fabric's light, so when I move, the arms are tight. Take the lead as we proceed to get a pump, make the muscle bleed. With my wholemeal oats, mix that in with some daily quotes. Time to hit the gym, lift some weight, get them limbs in shape. I gotta check in first on the book, so all the girls know where to look. Yeah. I start the sesh with my pre, and I walk around the gym for all to see. Yeah. Feeling good and looking buff, cause a 20 kg rotator cuff. When I check the comp, I keep in touch and make sure I'm lifting twice as much. I finish my session nice and sore, then I tell my mates once I'm out the door. Strings in lift, put the muscles on show, so everyone knows that I'm fing lift, bro. bro. Well, tell us about Deep Gordon because I love the story here and the character that you've you've got and uh, the music you're doing. But uh, how did how did Deep Gordon come into being? Well, I was playing ping pong one day, about like 2012 or something, and I was just playing deep in the court. I was just going deep and hit like the edge. One of the points just hit the edge of the the table, and like it's pretty much impossible to hit them back. And I was just like, oh, that was deep. That was Deep Gordon. It is <laughs> since then, just being Deep Gordon. Like I started playing, it's like that's Deep Gordon. Just keep hitting it deep, and it just held onto that name. And sort of had sort of a couple of other names. I sort of used my normal name, and then I sort of like come back to it. I was like, yeah, Deep Gordon sounds sounds good. So I sort of stick it out with that, eh? Deep. Thought it has a good meaning to it as well, yeah, Deep. Oh, that was deep. That wasn't deep. Huh? This is deep. The money and the honey. It's all about the money <laughs> and the honey. Uh, yeah. 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 Ah. Man. Man. Deep. So you can feel. Deep. So you know it's real. I like it, man. And of course, the the first video that you kind of that I saw. That got a lot of attention was uh, "Get Behind It." Um, tell us about that track in the video. Well, I was, what was it on? Yeah, I was made that like the start of 2018. I made it, and um, yeah, just made the song "Get Behind It." <laughs> and I was, and I was just rollerblading. Well, I was rollerblading one day, and I was, I was just walking on the beach, and yeah, you know, I was just thinking about trying to be creative and just get some inspiration and. You know, to sort of make this song called Get Behind It, where you just, you know, show people support. And you want to get behind them, you know, get behind it. Well, I like it too, because we're both Gold Coast boys, and you're showing off the Gold Coast in the video. Lots of stuff at the beach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was up down in Miami there on, uh, in Queensland, or Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, just, I mean, I always loved rollerblading, and, you know, sort of get back into it, like, the last few years, and, 
thought I'd I just thought of this way of uh, making this video where I strip it down while rollerblading backwards and singing the song and you know making a story out of it and just bring this idea to life, baby. Oh yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the dimples and the lines round your gluteus maximus. It kind of reminds me of my next missus. Said I understand the work it takes to keep it fit So I wanna show my support and get behind it Get the 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 get behind it So I wanna show my support and get behind it You take it to the beach and get it all tan. That's something that the fans will only understand The type of time it takes to keep it all lit So I wanna show my support and get behind it Get the 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 get behind it So I wanna show my support and get behind it Let me get behind it Get the get behind it Let me get behind it Get the get behind it Let me get behind it Get the get behind it Let me get behind it Oh, thanks for the support. Girl, I just wanted to get behind it. Oh, come here, you. <laughs> no one's ever done that before. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on now. Show your support. Get behind. A lot of the stuff, I guess, pretty much all the stuff you do is self-created. You and your mate Blake and, and some of the other guys that live with you at the house. And I love the video for Check Me Out. So that's filmed in your street, right? Yeah, it's down the street. Um, yeah, I had an idea of just break. I mean, I wanted to break through something and just ended up making this green screen made out of out of this foam and made a human-sized mouse trap where yeah, one of my mates gets stuck in it. My mate Blake gets stuck in this mouse trap and yeah, just it's other prop where it's, yeah, man, like a, it's like his chick, but it's like a full photo printout, full size photo printout of this chick. Yeah, and just a lot of props were used that day. We ended up getting it in one shot, one take. We got it all in one take, and ended up like I was stressing about it for like two months, just like, how are we going to do this? How's the girl going to go? Then we just the first day we got it, and I was like, what? It's all come together in one shot, and it's like, I was hectic. And it's like, that's it, it's done. <laughs> but yeah, it was just pretty much the windiest day when we filmed that one. Like, couldn't have picked a windier day. And I was like, there trying to hold up all these props and all this green screen. It was just, everything was, it was the worst day. We got it done. And... Why don't you check me out? Check, check me out. Why don't you check me out? Check. Me out. You can't fool me, bitch, with your fake asses You're covered all up with a pair of sunglasses True Bitches with no depth to them Turn them to the side and you won't even see them True 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 People walk 
fucking round to the standards of the crowd I can't fucking tell if you're a human or a mouse And when the fuck did likes become a fucking rule? Who gives a fuck if they think it's fucking cool? Finally, somebody speaking some truth. Finally, somebody speaking some truth. It's gonna be hard to see cause fake is the new truth. So tell us a bit more about Blake. I mean, how long have you guys been working together? And there's a, there's a great video uh, where you guys have put together like this little sort of short film called How Bad Do You Want It? Well, we've known each other like 10 years now. My, my old, older roommate knew him and sort of introduced me to him like 10 years ago. And he's sort of just been coming over. Like when I got injured, he came over and just stayed over. He just comes over and stays over. And that one of the blokes just hangs with you, hangs out with you. Then... He ended up moving into my house like three three years ago and then I come back from LA and moved in with him. So I've been living with him for like a year and a half now. Yeah, around a year and a half and Yeah, I always make weird I always make videos and that and so when I got back from LA I needed like another actor and he <laughs> he lives with me. Always he always like, I don't know, he's sort of just just a natural actor and sort of just like, Alright, I need someone to do this he's like, All right. He gets in. I'm like, like pretty much every every week. I'm like, yeah, I need you to do. Need you to be a girl. And he's like, all right, gets him on, get him in front of the screen, in front of the camera. And then, yeah, he pretty much does everything. I, like, I need you to be a Mexican. He can pretty much do anything. He's just like a natural, natural actor. He hasn't really. He certainly did a couple of courses back in school, but yeah, he doesn't really. Is his forte, but he's he should be. He's already. So, look, um, Murray. Murray, is it? Murray. Uh, you've done extremely well to make it this far. You really have. But, unfortunately, for the leading role, we're looking for someone with a bit of a higher profile. Somewhere around the five million follower mark. Yes. I'm very sorry. But, what if I get... Five million followers. How are you going to do that if you don't even have an Instagram? But what if I get Instagram and I get five million followers? Look, we start shooting in less than a month and before then we have to sort out catering, we have to figure out where we're going to be shooting. But what if I get five million in one week? You get five million followers in one week and I'll suck your dick. <laughs> Well, do I still get the job? You come back here in one week with five million followers. Alright. And we'll see. Well, deal's a deal. Okay. Shake on it. <sighs> Whatever, just get out of here. I've got plenty of stuff I'm gonna get to. Alright, I'll be back in a week. Thank you. Mmm. So how are they going? Oh, bro. Yeah, not too good, eh? Did you put the hashtags on it? Yep, I put the hashtags. And what about the other ones? Hey guys, it's me here. <laughs> If you guys want to know how to get um, six pack, you just guys have to follow me. I'll see you there. And I'm going to show you how to cook breakfast. <laughs> A carrot on top. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, two. No, oh, they're not doing too good eh, either. Are well, you going to do anything about it? Jeez. I'm here slaving away. Five million we need. I work so hard and all these girls do is just
Mendoza. Take it now, Mendoza. Now. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Mendoza! It's working! Mendoza! It's working! Mendoza! It's, it's working, Mendoza! It's working! There you have it sir, 5 million followers in one week, like I said. How the hell, is that even you? Yes, it is. Alright, alright, I'm a man of my word. I hope so. Uh, but first, there's something I'd like to show you upstairs. You guys are absolutely great together. Um, the song, I probably got schizophrenia. There's, a, mm. I'm sure, an interesting story behind you creating that song and then another great video. Yeah. Well, it's sort of just a take on society, how everyone works nine to five, and if you don't, then there's something wrong with you, you know? So I sort of, and I come home one day and I was just like going crazy and just thought of the line, I thought of it, and like, you know, I probably got schizophrenia sort of thing and sort of just played off that and, yeah, went off that, but. It was like one verse in there. It's pretty much a conversation I had with my dad, like a, like last year. It's pretty funny, like just talking about working nine to five, getting a house, and not doing anything until you retire. And you know, when you retire, you're too old and flimsy to actually do anything. You're just sitting there in your wheelchair, like, oh, now I'm retired, I can go and do things, I can go and live life. <laughs> and you can't even move, you know. So I'm just getting the, the point across where you should just do it now, live it up now, do what you love, you know, while you still. Well, you can still move and you've got a healthy body and you're young, you know, so that's what sort of the point I'm trying to get across in that one. But, but yeah, and the video is really, uh, I needed I needed someone that, yeah, that could conflict with deep. And just, just walking around the house one day, I need, I need calm way. I need agent calm way. <laughs> my, and my roommate Blake was just like, agent motherfucking calm <laughs> Oh, let's go. We're in the garage, started filming it. Mendoza! 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 Get him on the line. <laughs> I wondered if I would get my chance. And today, I do. Agent Conway, bitch. That's me. I'm Agent motherfucking Conway. And I'm coming for you, motherfucker. I think I'm out of touch with reality. I think I got something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with me. You know what? I probably got schizophrenia. If I don't work nine to five, I probably got schizophrenia. If you listen to the media, I probably got schizophrenia. If I don't have my head up my ass. I probably got schizophrenia And if I don't give a fuck what you think I probably got schizophrenia If I'm not married with the baby While fucking someone else when I get lonely What? He's probably gay. Yeah, what a loan yeah. they talk to him He's probably got schizophrenia If I don't have a car on my dick What? Representing how big my dick is Ew, gross. He has no money he probably got schizophrenia If I don't work 9 to 5 yeah. I probably got schizophrenia If you listen to the media I, don't know. 
I probably got schizophrenia. If I don't have my head up my ass, I probably got schizophrenia. And if I don't give a fuck what you think, what? I probably got schizophrenia. If I don't rest my face like a bitch. While walking around pretending I'm rich. What is he on? Well, yeah, probably definitely on. something wrong with him. He probably got schizophrenia. If I'm not a million dollars in debt and paying it off until I drop dead. Party time, motherfucker. <laughs> Hi, motherfucker. Agent fucking Conway at your service. What is this? What I do? It's more what you haven't been doing deep. Like working like the rest of this motherfucker. How about that, huh? We're all working nine to five here. Fucking paying mortgages off. Supporting fucking children. You're fucking dancing around like a little fucking ferret on a fucking Sunday afternoon. This is how this is gonna go, motherfucker. What are you doing? You're gonna stop with all this shit not working nine to five. It's time to conform, deep. Come on, conform. Join us. No. You're being a fucking stranger guy. Come on. Ah. Now conform. No. Tell me you'll give it up. And this deep thinking motherfucker, I'll take it out of you. Stop this shit. <laughs> We're taking over, bitch. You motherfucker. Blue ass bitch, motherfucker. Well, you look like a homo. You've lost the fucking plot, man. You fucking lost me. I will never conform to you, bitch. You son of a bitch. Deep Gordon versus Agent Conway. Fucking final round. Fight. <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh, no. Take that. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bitch. Finish him. Kick your ass, bitch. Oh. G. Gordon wins. I probably got schizophrenia. <laughs> Why don't y'all take your mask off and stop being a zombie ass bitch following the crowd, huh? Why don't you do that? You shot that on an iPhone right out the front of your house and you have a studio at the front of your house that you've built that you do all your music in. So what I love mm. about it is it's, it's all self-created. Yeah, everything's self-created. I feel that way. I reckon you get more freedom to do what you want, like... Like if I wake up one morning, I want to film something, or I'm just going to film it now, and you have to wait on anyone, you have to, doesn't, doesn't cost anything really, and doesn't cost that much, you have heaps of props and costumes, but it's another story, but yeah, yeah, it's just everything's here, we've got a McDouble garage, where it's all my, all my props and costumes, and my green screen in there, and yeah, the studio, the music, so... Yeah, it's pretty much for everything. For that track, uh, Grab the Bull by the Horns, did you have like everyone staying at your house involved in that? Grasp it, baby. Grasp, Grasp it. Grasp the bull, sorry. Grasp. It's a word that many people use, but it's, it's a great word. It is. Grasp. Yeah, that chick that's in the movie, in the video, she was living with me at that at that time, and yeah, she's on the song as well, Aaron Half Sesh. Um, yeah, my roommate was the Mexican and the bull as well, and the chick was yeah, she was living with me at that time, and and yeah, everyone got 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 involved. We sort of shot him, went down there and set it all up, and done like a little, tried to make a little fence, but it looks pretty funny how <laughs> how shit it is, but comes off pretty good. When 
when she take the bull by the horns I can't right my wrongs I can't sing my songs I can't I'm a grass that bull by the horns and ride it all day long and ride it from dust to dawn and ride it until I fall. Grass that bull by the horns, take it like it's yours, take it for a walk, take it until it falls. I'm a grass that bull by the horns and ride it all day long and ride it from dust to dawn and ride it until I fall. So grass that bull. By the horns, take it like it's yours, take it for a walk, take it until it falls. And so, you know, the videos you've made, it's all to do with the album, the album of the year. Um, what, what's your plans now with your music? Well, two more music videos come out, Money and Honey, and have a baby itch and um yeah the next one money and honey is pretty much nearly done probably be released soon in the next week or two but yeah it's next level it's <laughs> on the next level everyone that i've sort of previewed it to a couple of people and they're just like what the hell is going oh, on i can't wait to see it yeah. but other than that yeah, i've got more singles i want to collaborations i've made with other people around the gulf coast i want to like a lot of singles i want to release and and start working on the next album, and then do a live show of it all. Wow. The great show ever. Nice, man. And so, the, I mean, the videos you guys have been making, they're all awesome. Um, but one cover insurance, right? You guys did a competition for them, and now you're making stuff for them? Yeah, yeah, we did like a competition like a year ago for them where like, you win 10 grand, you answer this question and do a video and answer this, the one thing you shouldn't do when you go on holiday or something. And we entered it. And ended up coming like third, like we got the staff, staff pick award or whatever, and we got one like 1500 or something. Then, like a couple weeks later, they rang us up and wanted us to do two more videos for them, and we're like, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> then, like, we've done that, and after that, they said, oh, we want you to do a song for us. And we're like, song in a video, I'm like, oh, yeah, right, we'll do it, we'll do that. And then, we're done. And after that, a few weeks later, they're like, all right, we want six more songs, and Six more music videos, and wow. we made, made another song for them, and they loved it. And they're like, "All right, I want you to make three TV ads for us." And we're like, "What?" That's awesome, man. Epic. So yeah, we're like, pretty much going to be making some TV ads in the next few weeks, and yeah, it's come come a long way, but yeah. The one thing you shouldn't do on your holiday. Brought to you by One Cover Travel Insurance. One day, two blokes decided to go on a holiday. Even though each one of them looked just like the other, these two young blokes didn't even know each other. There was, however, one difference between the two. One got one cover insurance, and one bloody forgot to. This meant one had all the fun one can, while the other one was afraid of even getting a suntan. Just a friendly face throwing a flying disc was a potential danger and far too great a risk. For the rest of the stay, things panned out like this. One lad giving it his all, and the other lad giving it a miss. For one of the lads, it was his best trip yet. As for the other, it's one he'd rather forget. So, the one thing on holiday you should absolutely never do is forget to find someone who'll be looking out for you. Someone like one cover in insurance. One cover travel insurance. Give me that insurance. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, you know, I love asking people around the world what they could do if they could live the ultimate dream. So I'd love to ask that of you. What what would it be for you? So uh, Coachella, baby. Dick Gordon, Coachella. Singing the song, singing the Dick Gordon song, just everyone singing, yeah. Game on. Come. Coachella, where you at? Dick Gordon, everyone singing the song, sold out. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, you know, it's great to have you on the show. 
and I uh, wish you all the best with it, man. Oh, well, mate, I'll see you at Coachella, baby. So there you go, a great career to follow, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the platform.